Welcome to this episode of Hanging Out with Successful Bar Exam Takers. And today I am very excited to be talking to almost a unicorn. Uh, the California February 2022 results came out and there were only 485 repeat bar takers who passed the exam in this last administration of the test. We're talking to one of them. Hi, John. How are you? Hi, Jackson. How are you? I'm glad to have you here. And in all disclosure, you and I did this interview about an hour ago and we didn't get it recorded properly. So we're going to take a second try at it. So we'll repeat, we're repeat recorders, right? We're repeat recorders. Absolutely. All right. Listen, thank you so much for being here, but congratulations on an extraordinary accomplishment. So few people passed in this last exam. What does it feel like to know that you're one of those 485? Wow. Words cannot describe how I'm feeling right now. It's amazing. Yeah. I'd like you to share with our audience, if you would, a little bit of your backstory, because it's really an interesting one. You did not take the traditional route to the bar exam. And I think people would be interested in how you got to this position. Sure. Yeah. My, my law journey started actually by a text message. My dad's been practicing law for 40 years and knew that I had a burning desire to want to become a part of the profession. And I've been involved with his practice for about 10 years now. And we found out that California is one of the states that allows uh, a mentorship program. And I was so heavily involved in the practice that I really couldn't make the time commitment at that time to a four-year law school. And I petitioned the bar for, for the apprenticeship and they accepted me. And I did that for a year through correspondence with the California State Bar. And after the first year, you're required to take the baby bar exam, the first year law students examination. I took that, I was able to pass it on my first attempt. And after I did that, I decided that law school would probably be a better route for me to go instead of doing the correspondence for the entire four years. So I applied to Lincoln Law School of San Jose, was accepted there, luckily, and completed my degree there after four years of night school and ended up taking the bar and was unsuccessful my first attempt. And that's when uh, I reached out to you. Yeah. And I think it's really remarkable. So few people challenged the first year exam successfully. I know Kim Kardashian was one of them, but she didn't do it on her first try. But the reality was that so few people get there and then you went to law school, you prepared and you did the traditional approach to the bar and you came up about 40 points short. And I want to talk a little bit about what your mindset was at that point. You reached out and talked to me before you signed up. What did you feel like at that point? I felt very demoralized. I was riding a pretty good wave. I was a valedictorian in my law, law school class. So I felt that with my knowledge and, and drive that I could white knuckle the bar exam, just like I did every other law final and, and midterm and what have you. So that obviously didn't work. And so I needed to try something different. Yeah. And when we first talked and we talked about this need to do something different. I think one of the really interesting things for me was how willing you were to embrace that concept. Even though you had a good score, you knew you weren't going to get over the top doing the same thing again. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah. And so we devised a study plan for you that was different. It took a different approach to writing, a different approach to study, a different approach to the multi-state. And you really embraced that as well as letting me work with you as a coach. And we did a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching calls. One of the really uh, encouraging things to me was to see how you grew, not just as a writer, but also in your mindset. There was a big change over time, wasn't there? Oh, it was huge. I developed a very hyper-competitive, high-performance mindset, put my mind to something, I can accomplish it. But I was going about the bar exam the wrong way. And instead of thinking, oh, I've got to do this and I've got to slug it out. And if I put myself through this much pain, it's going to pay dividends in the future. What you were able to do, and we'll get into the actual substantive course, but what you did for my mindset is you were able to get me to think and get me to think outside the box and get me to think in this David and Goliath fight against the bar that it's not as big as you think it is. And, and you like to do this. 
this is what you're born to do. This, the taking the bar should not be a dreadful thing. It should be something, Hey, I'm here to show off my skills. I can do this. And getting me to think that way really circumvented a lot of pressure. And on top of being prepared, those two things, mindset and being prepared really is what made the difference in this exam. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and I could see that difference, John, that when we talked right before the exam, you knew you were ready. You knew you could pass the exam and you knew that you didn't have to white knuckle your way through it, that you literally knew the law instead of having to memorize and crave it. Let, mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about the technique, because one of the big changes that we made and you and I worked on was changing your writing style from IRAC style issue rule application conclusion over to a different writing style that we called fact law application. Can you talk about what that change meant for you? Oh, fluidity under pressure, being able to get the words on the page instead of using the rules of law to write your answer, you're using the facts and the facts bring forth the issues and your dispute T charts and just the entire process is really how a good lawyer should attack a problem. And being one yourself, just the entire way you put this course together is just excellent. And it works. FLA works. Anybody who's watching this video, YouTube out there, FLA works. If you're taking the California bar exam, do not shy away from this course. This is a course for you, honestly. And it worked for me. And just because it's California, just because it's the hardest exam in the nation does not mean that Jackson's system uh, will not work for this exam because it's worked for me and it's worked for a ton of other people that have come before me. So I believe in it. Thank you. I appreciate that a great deal. I know that people are always afraid to make a change. And I think one of the great things here was that you embraced what we were asking you to do in the writing style, but you also in, embraced one of the, the tools that we talk about a lot, which is mind maps for note taking. I'd like you to talk a little bit about mind maps and how you incorporated those into your study. Absolutely. Mind maps are an extremely powerful tool that not only your conscious brain, but frankly, your subconscious brain, which you helped me tap into, which is extremely important when you're in a pressure situation under time conditions, if you have, everything's in the subconscious and you have, you have to trust it. And you help me release my brakes, get the training wheels off and actually really trust what was in my head. And instead of white knuckling, trying to get the information to come out from my conscious brain, it really just flowed, to be honest with you. You said you were a visual learner and that you could actually see in your mind's eye where the I, particular rules were. Yep. Just helpful to you? Oh yeah. I highly recommend mind maps to anybody preparing for the bar in order to condense big amounts of information as we know we need to do. Studying for the bar, mind maps are excellent because your brain, instead of, you know, a traditional outline where uh, you might not be able to visually recall the information when it's organized in a map, at least for my brain. I was able to actually visualize when I'm sitting there taking the exam, where's my contracts mind map and just looking at a inanimate object on the wall and trying to visualize that map and where everything is. And it was great. It's a wonderful tool. You have to do mind maps if you want to get the law down. Yeah, I think so. And, and I'm really glad that you embraced that. I think it's important to point out to people that while you were studying for the bar for the February exam, you were also working, weren't you? I was, yeah. I had to reel it back, cut some hours, put the time in. You have to put the time in. You have to sell out. And that's what the, pretty much the hardest thing was getting the IRAC methodology out and bringing in all the FLA methodology and really selling out to it. And after four, five, six essays in, do after one essay in each subject, you're going to get it and you're going to see that the fact-driven analysis with Jackson's FLA methodology works. It works under pressure because that's where a lot of students get jammed up. I know I, I got jammed up on my first exam with Iraq because there was a specific call where 
I was having issues on how to argue both sides, how to incorporate these facts, how to do this, how to do that. And FLA allows you to do that without having to mull, mull over and waste time on that. That is a time waster. And you helped me remove that. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the coaching. You and I did uh, video coaching calls. We went through your work, your performance tests, your essays, generally just how you were doing with your studies. Yeah. What, what difference did that make for you as compared to trying to figure it out on your own? Oh, nine day, nine day. Anybody who's watching this video, sign up for the coaching. Having good mentors is huge. Show me your friends. I'll show you your future. If you don't have a coach, if you don't have a success coach, shoot, you look at you look at Tiger Woods when he won his three straight U.S. amateurs. Who was his caddy? Sports psychologist. Okay, you got you have to have a mentor, and the fact that Jackson, you have opened your opened your doors to students to work with them one on one. People might see FLA. They say, well, "How do I do this?" Sign up for the coaching. Jackson will walk you through it. Once you get it, you're gonna have it. It applies to every single subject. It even applies to performance tests. It's a system. Go in there prepared. You're going to do well. Thank you. Let's talk a little bit about the multi-state because it's obviously a very tough exam. And how did this study approach impact the way you took the MBE? It changed a lot. It changed a lot. I was due, I was working with adaptive, nothing against adaptive bar, but I think their algorithm is flawed because you, I would get the same questions. So you do a hundred questions a day or w whatever you're working on. You'd see questions over and over again. And it's great for your ego because your score is increasing because you know the answer, but guess what? You're not growing. And bar study is all about growth. And your course allowed me to grow big time and get out of my comfort zone and be able to attack these problems. Help me with my timing. The timing was very important. The way that you have your questions systematically ordered helps you get the law in your head. It's a great tool doing those MBDs. And, and you've got all the nuances in there. It's not just a once over. You've got, you've got questions in there that test really esoteric areas of the law, which, which is important. I know that you shared with me earlier what happened on the day that results came out, but it's a great story. And I'm, I'm hoping that you'll be able to reshare it here again, but for those that don't know, in California, they released the results on Friday night, 6 p.m., and everybody knows they're coming at that moment, and you knew they were coming, and what happened? Oh, sure. It's one of the most amazing times of my life. I was in, actually, this office with my dad, and uh, I was so nervous. I was so nervous. I had to go take a walk at about 5.30 and came back 10 minutes before 6.00 had my dad come in. I said, Hey, he, man, you got to check this for me. I just, I can't do it. And, and so he sat down and I'm over and there's an easy chair over in the corner there. And I was sitting in the easy chair and he clicked that button and he turned around and he said, Hey, you passed. And we just went absolutely insane. And, um, and it was just a, the most beautiful moment and uh, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. It's an amazing feeling to, to get through this test. I'm sure your father is exceedingly proud of you as all of your family are. It's a great moment, but for you, it's got to feel like, wow, here's this journey that started so many years ago, and now you're going to be a member of the firm. And, and what does that feel like? It's incredible. It's just, it's been a five year journey for me. I took an un unorthodox route to start. And uh, it's just amazing. I'm very grateful. And uh, I took the first two steps. I know the man upstairs took the third one for me and got to give him credit. I know that faith is a big part of your life. And as you were preparing near the end, just getting yourself in that trusting mode to know that you didn't have to do it all, that made a difference for you, didn't it? Oh, absolutely. You have to, it's a lot of pressure and you have to find something greater than yourself to, to cast those fears onto. And you have to have faith. You have to have faith in yourself. And that's what really made the difference for me. And I walked in, just surrendered, totally surrendered and said, whatever happens and I'm going to be okay with it. And I went in with the right mindset this time. And that's what you really helped me with is turning this big beast into a very minimal, minimal hurdle, even though that's really not the case. That's with mindset and coaching, your coaching, I train my mind uh, how, to, how to think that way. 
we could really see the difference as you were getting ready. I, I said to you in our last call, you're going to pass. And it's not that I'm omnipotent, but you demonstrated all the skills. You had applied the things we asked you to do. You had been diligent in your studies. You had the right mindset. We knew you had the capability. And it was really exciting to see that. I, I said to you earlier today, I know you're going to be successful in the practice of law. You're just one of those people that just has it all. And I don't want people to think that it was easy for you to get here. It was certainly not easy, was it? Mm. A lot of work, especially taking the exam twice, picking yourself up, dusting yourself off, fighting to uh, block all the negative thoughts and, and giving it giving it another shot and being successful it makes it that much sweeter. And it's really amazing. So anybody out there who hasn't passed and you're looking for another, another method that works, especially in California, you need to call Celebration Bar Review. Absolutely. hundred percent. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for sharing your story a second time. Hopefully we got it recorded this time. And uh, I, I just want to wish you the very best. We're very proud of your accomplishment. We're so excited for you and for your family. And we know that you're going to be a terrific asset and, and member of the California Bar. And glad that we could be part of this process for you. I know that your story will encourage so many people, particularly in this difficult time with the California Bar, that it really can be done. And there's nothing magic or secret about it. It's just putting yourself into the system and making it work, right? 100%. A 100%, just because you're taking the test in California, celebrate the FLA method, celebration bar review, but you will be prepared. If you put the work in and you finish the course as much as you can, you're going to walk in there feeling good. And that's half the battle. Well, great. Thank you so much. Appreciate you spending your, your time with us and sharing this story to our audience. I hope that this is encouraged and inspired you as much as it does me. We want to wish everyone good luck on their exams. And again, thank you, John. With that, we're going to sign off. We'll see you again next time with another successful war taker. Bye-bye.